So today we're going to work on some of the details on actually the underside of the seat. Um, so you'll you actually you'll be able to see them from walking around it, looking at the sides. Um, we had already done all the the edges are beveled, and in addition to that, I was going to do some faceting and. What that entails really is just going from point zero back a quarter inch. And you, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the, the pencil lines, but um, there's just some faceting from, from here to there and from all the corners. I'm just gonna add a little bit of detail and it also will lighten up the seat a little bit as far as you know, just visually um, taking some of the, the heaviness off of the sides it'll visually make it look lighter which um, I think will be a benefit um, should be fairly noticeable when completed so when I'm going to when I'm doing this um, I, I tend to again this is one of those that <clears throat> I do by hand um, there's just to do it with machine you know, would take so much setup and uh, you know maybe if I was you know, making a hundred of these a year or something, or even, you know, whatever, uh, you know, it might be something that a CNC would do automated. Um, you know, you know, I get just hypothetically, it's not something that I would necessarily do, but, um, so I, I kind of take these as individual basis and, um, it's easier just to pull out the hand tools and, um, and to knock these out because they are, there's just there's too much too many angles going on and um, that's just what I what I prefer to do. So, like I said, we're going from zero from nothing to about a quarter of an inch in and down. Um, so to Can you do that again. I've been slow on the YouTube camera. Zero. Oh, do so you have to show again. Kind of from nothing here in the very center. Thank you. To a quarter inch into the seat and down from this from the from this surface down a quarter inch and back a quarter inch. Same thing over here, basically from all the edges, I'll go from a quarter inch in from this point to this is my zero point here, this little straight. And then from that zero point to this corner in a quarter of an inch and down a quarter of an inch. And you know, that'll make sense. It'll make a little bit more sense once I start going. Um, really the question is, what do you use to take that material away? So I can use a block plane the whole time, um, but basically I would be kind of nibbling away at the corner to try to end up with a Z, you know, come out at, at the very center point there with, with just the slightest little bevel. I find that, you know, or either a chisel would work. Um, this is kind of when I make an excuse to bring out my draw knife again, because I can make quick work out of it. Um, even if it's only a few passes, I can remove more material and um, get to where I'm with the block plane, um, finalizing the shape. So, that being said, I'll just start cutting. So again, this draw knife, is just a big blade and I can um, control the amount of cut by basically the angle of my hands. Um, hold on one second. I think I've got to restart Instagram again. No hold on. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Acting up. Sorry about that. Okay, we're back. Okay. Start again? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Just pick up right where you left off. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> There we go. Hello. Welcome, welcome. So for those of y'all just tuning in, we 
apologize. We've had some technical difficulties, it appears, but um, just fastening the outer edges of the seat for the rocking stool today. And it's also Joseph's birthday, which is kind of cool. So do what you love on your birthday. Had to go to work, darn. Oh, yeah. Y'all, please don't be shy. Say hello where you're from. So, and as a reminder, since we have had some connective difficulties today, we do record these and then put them on YouTube, um, on Joseph Thompson Woodworks channel. So you can go back and watch from the beginning and um, if you have any questions. So Instagram just must be overloaded right now, but it's working now, so that's good. anyone has any questions, of course. So you're doing this to the front. You're gonna do a little bit to the sides. You've got the back. Are you <clears throat> completely done with the front? Right here? Mm, uh, no, I guess more like the top of the oh, actual seat. Um, Are you happy with how that's sitting or? Yeah, it's just, um, you know, still kind of, I wouldn't say rough, but off the, I see. the spoke shave or travisher. Um, you know, the next things would be um, card scraper and sander just to get that, um, get it, I guess, finish ready. Yeah. But, uh, Jesse Lowry says, woo, gonna be a rad piece. Thanks, bud. Hey, Jesse. Hope y'all doing all right? Yeah. Um, So there's kind of a, a, a point to where I have some, you know, these details um, kind of get, I wouldn't say fragile, but they get to where they can get dented or bruised. And, um, you know, so. Kind of ding. Yeah, you know, even just by what's holding it. Um, I had to bunch up this mat here just because um, since I've had it turned over, the seat turned over my, my bevel points, the single, you know, the outside top edge is kind of a pretty fragile edge out there that the little bench dogs are pressing into. So they could, it would, it doesn't take much to dent them or, um, mm. so they get dented after make another swipe that changes, um, reveals and things like that. So I'm trying to just be as careful. I can careful as I can at this point, um, and get all these little details done. Um, and then, you know, basically I can, I can even attach the seat and do my final sanding and things like that. Um, you know, maybe not ideally cause it's going to be rocking. So, but, um, uh, <laughs> that, that's not so bad. I'll have it turned over right side up on this mat and I really don't have to have anything holding it with this little non-slip mat to do the, the final sanding of the seat shape. Um, but as far as planing these facets, I definitely need something holding it. So, um, 
talking about attaching the seat to the base, you had been talking about using the brass, making the, oh, yeah. the um, brass holders. Yeah, I was talking about um, you know fabricating some um, brass, flat brass stock um, that would be mortised into the rails of the frame of the rocking chair. And then the other night I had it put together and I was like, you know, that's, it's not necessary. Um, I'd already built in a place to fasten it with the top rails that would um, be totally sufficient and there wouldn't be the extra work of making the brass. Even though they're really cool, they're, they're not necessary for this. And uh, I'm not doing something that's- oh, It'd be over. It's, it's not overdone. done. Would it be overdone? Overdone and it's just not necessary. I mean, I'm all about doing, you know, the, the very best job and for the, um, doing it, the very best way but i'm not gonna you know carve an eagle on the bottom of it if there doesn't need to be an eagle on the bottom of it. <laughs> so um so i can i'll uh i'll show you my what i've what i'll be able to do that's a lot simpler and just makes a lot more sense um basically i'll um uh, i've got some stretcher rails that go in between the two sides of the frame and I'll be able to put in a slotted hole or a slotted well, a slot for um, for a, several screws that'll be able to move with the expansion and contraction of the seat width wise um, that will actually end up doing a better job than the brass would, based on where I would have to locate those brass pieces, I can actually get farther out to the edge of the seat, which would, you know, then ensure that, you know, if they're, if they're, my hole downs are in here, you know, and that seat wants to kind of lift or buck, not buckle, but Curve. lift on the bottom edges, um, there would be some, some gaps that could possibly happen where this this other option will allow that i can fasten it in the middle and all the, all the way kind of to the very edge and it'll um just it'll do a better job so so win-win we got a question from sorry to cut you off yeah. jmg columbia asks is it an old piece of wood or new so those of us that have just joined us welcome thanks for tuning in but if you want to put this on the top there for a second to kind of show everyone so this will be the final product a rocking stool yeah so so it's a rocking stool it's got flats here that when you can rock and then you can actually perch forward and sit on those flats um, it's really a work stool so <clears throat> you could kind of sit perched forward engaged in whatever you're working on you know computer easel or whatever um, it is tying your shoes, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, That's me. This is something I was I designed years ago, and finally getting a chance to to be able to do it. Awesome. So that's pretty. I see a little bit of yeah. pencil line over here. Did yeah. that? Yeah, did I that think, answer? I think that answers it. So. Um, but, but yeah, this is a new build. Yes, new build. And we've been live streaming the build of it for a couple weeks now, and we record it and post them to YouTube. So if you look for Joseph Thompson Woodworks on YouTube, you'll be able to find, we didn't go, we didn't start putting them up there at the very beginning, but there's at least a few weeks of work up there that you can kind of catch up um, and see what's going on. Hello, thanks for saying hi. So once I, I had all my pencil lines that kind of tell me exactly where to start and stop. And so I've removed one, so I'll come back here and um, mm -hmm. and draw it back on there. So I have my sight line for the side. Something like that. It's kind of connecting two points, that's all I'm doing.
Any, really, anybody working on anything out there? Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say that really, I don't even know what that angle is. It just, it's what I, um, I drew. I'm not really concerned about it. <laughs> Let's see which way my grain direction is going here. Trust past Joe. Lifting. Am I right in the way? That's okay. Hello. Ryan says he's working on a pretty sketchy quarantine mustache. I believe it. <laughs> That's funny. Do it, buddy. I think you've shaved your face probably more since being in quarantine because you probably have time to, whereas before, not so much. Yeah, exactly. Trying to get y'all. There you go. Yeah, as soon as I do that, I'm probably going to move, but. That's all right. Sucker. I apologize in advance. My cinematography skills are struggling today. It took me like 10 minutes to get set up. Like I don't do this every day. Um, nothing felt right, but this seems to be working. Ooh, that's nice. That's that. Try to scooch this way a little bit. There we go. Get a better look at that. Sliding around on me a good bit. Skirrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Or it says happy birthday. Ready? When I, what? Yeah. Oh boy. Youngins. Nice. Somebody walking down the stairs. I don't think they're quite there yet. Somebody's squealing. So yeah, we're here Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. We also do a Q&A on Wednesdays. So that's something to shake it up a little bit. You can also join Mary May on Twitch at 1 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. And I think she's starting a virtual class with the Florida School of Woodwork next week. So go and check that out. She's doing a couple, couple week long virtual carving class. So um, I don't know if she'll be doing her live stream next week or not, but her previous streams are still available on Twitch. So go check that out. Um, and then I also have a live stream on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. with the Women of Woodworking Project. Check us out there. We always have a good time. And um, so there's lots of ways you can stay connected and actually pretty much get a free woodworking education <laughs> tuning in every day. So we have a lot of fun doing it. So. And then of course, these are all added to YouTube too. So that's the only thing about Instagram. They did, you know, can share it for 24 hours, but they would want you to, I think, to share it to IGTV maybe. All right, intruder alert, I'll be back. I'm at it. You found me, yeah, you found did. found you. Right. Funny, I swear, I thought we told you to stay upstairs, huh? Yeah. In the bed. Can't get too upset with her. She's gonna be three tomorrow. So. So yeah, these. It's just small little details. They add a lot to a lot of a lot to the piece, and there's something about this, um, you know, the shape in the seat is, you know, the actual seat part is a lot like sculpture, and you know, I, I find that there's different parts of different kinds of parts or different parts of woodworking that I really enjoy at different times um you know shaping is really more sculptural kind of scratches that itch and then um some precision joinery is another a different approach but um you know requires i guess i wanted probably different kind of thinking but it's um you know challenging in a different way and then this is kind of a little bit of both some precision you know going to exact spots but still shaping and um so something i enjoy though a lot and also it's underneath the seat so i get to entertain the questions about why would you do something like that and spend a lot of time on a spot that that's not so visible and i guess my answer to that is i know it's there um the person who's sitting in it will be able to feel it and it's definitely it definitely is a visual um a visual detail but um it's definitely a tactile detail as well and that that's something that speaks to me, I guess. To me, it's like 
if you're going to spend the time and effort to make something this beautiful, finish it. You know, from all, um, from all angles. Right. That to me <clears throat> takes a piece from great to like excellent. So I told somebody that the other day, Sarah Watlington, she um, featured her on Women of Woodworking Feature Friday, and it was just a table of hers that, you know, the un it was a shot of the underside, and it was just as beautiful as the top. So um, check her out if you don't follow her already. But, um, but that's just how I feel about it, I, you know. And I'll be honest, I am that person when we go and see a new woodworker's work or <clears throat> some kind of piece. Yeah, beware. So. Immediately, I go to feel the underside to check. That's just kind of my thing. I don't know why. I, it just it means a lot to me too. So, um, so I can tell, guys. But you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do what what speaks to you. But that's just. What Judgy McJudgerson over here <laughs> the likes. So, I'm just worried that everyone's going to see that I was in your props today. <laughs> Sure it's casual Friday. Well, that way I'm going ahead and telling on myself. So just in case people know I'm embracing it. So. I'm so glad it ended up working out. I was worried at first that Instagram didn't seem to be connecting us. So. So next week, Monday, any guesses on what we'll be talking about, focusing on? You know, it depends a lot on if you're able to get down here on the weekends. Yeah, I mean, that, that really ultimately will decide, but... Um, We're going to be making a stool. Yeah, we'll be... <laughs> kind of. Finalize it or... Um, kind of... Last... Last little bit. Um, but sometimes that that's the part that takes the longest. I mean, lots of a lot of little fiddling a lot here. Of fiddling here. Um, some things that have to be done. Um, there, I will. I do want to do a little bit of edge treatment on the, the frame, whether that's just a, a small. Um, I don't know, just take breaking the edges or something. Um, no, I think that they definitely have to do some sort of softening. Any other questions? I'm always interested to hear what's catching people's 
thoughts. You know, I know at first you weren't extremely excited about that seat, but the more and more it comes out, you know, you shape around it, that grain pattern is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, growing it's, on me for it's sure. really nice. Everything doesn't have to be curly. To quilt to this curliest, fanciest stuff. Um, you know. Well, it, just not everything is. No, it, it certainly isn't. Um, and it, there's just, Places where, where pieces were in times to use it where it really works and sometimes something very understated is just as good and even better. So we got the question, any classes you do online? So Joseph can actually right now is offering virtual woodworking classes. So how that would work is if you wanted a one-on-one -on -one with him over Skype or FaceTime, you know, whichever, whichever platform you need to use, we can do. Um, also an idea is to, to maybe split a class with a friend or someone um, that we could kind of do a group session and that way you can kind of split the cost with them too. But right now, no, there's not anything kind of out there to pre-prepared for folks to go to, but if there was something specific you wanted to learn or if you wanted to take, you could probably take just your basic hand tools, intro to woodworking class, and then depending on your setup, go from there. But, um, so Joseph is offering, offering virtual classes. If you send us a message, we can start working on that. And that typically, I mean, seems to be the way it goes. I, I, I've never had something really concrete set up as a class. It's usually kind of based on what what that student needs and where they are and their you know their level and kind of what they're what they're interested in. Well, and it depends on your experience. Like yeah, if you come true. in and you have no experience, then yes, you do have the intro to woodworking hand tools workshop that's that's right pretty specific because that covers sharpening and hand tool usage and just like all the basics and then from there we usually start working on some joinery with that's some right. folks um basic joinery mm -hmm. some of the fundamentals or some of the, mm -hmm. the ones that you know you could actually make a piece of furniture with mortise and tenon things like that vital joints um and then then, then on to some more advanced stuff, you know, dovetails or, uh, and that, that has a, a range all in itself of how fancy you want to get. All right, so. Thanks y'all, lots of comments saying nice. <laughs> I agree, is nice. So, you can see. Wow. That visually lightens it up. A good bit. I did finish this side over here, right? A nurse, yes. Yeah. Wow. So, so tilt it up just the back. Yeah, there you go. Just a little bit. So you can see. Wow. Yeah. So at this point, here's kind of what I was talking about as far as the pieces that are holding the work where they're denting. Ah! You see it? See it somewhere in here? I'll feel it right there. Mm -hmm. It's a big dent. It's just from the, even the plastic with the rubber little bumpers on it still dented it. Wow. Um, so I've got that going on. 
there and there and here. So Not it's the soldering iron. It's basically well, I, basically I, I'll uh, I'll be able to hit it with you know basically one swipe of the hand plane. And uh, the only thing after that, really, um, the only thing that happens to the top besides the seat being scraped and um, sanded is, um, you know, everything right now is super crisp, hard, I mean, right off the hand plane. So, um, now I'm about to lay it back down. Is it going to be in view? Um, I'll just hold it. Um, so, um, these, these top edges will just get a, a slight, not the, not the sharpness off. I, I like the crispness of it, um, but I don't want it to, to be sharp. It has to, to feel good. Um, that's super important to me. Um, but also don't want it to be um, what I call doughy, which is just kind of, you know, rounded over like I took, like I took a piece of 80 sandpaper and you know, rubbed on it a little bit. I want it to be really crisp. Um, All right, I'm back. So, <laughs> basically I'm just taking a super light pass, making these tiny little brow shavings. Mm -hmm. And that just, I mean, it, it's all the difference in the world what your hand feels. It, um, that was a nice one. Um, <laughs> that just, you know, I, that right there, if I'm sitting there and that feels, it's, it's, it's crisp and it's, I guess, sharp looking, um, you know, in the crispness I got of it, but it's definitely nice. It's, it ends up being probably, you know, not a 16th, but, you know, almost like a, a 32nd to a 16th inch round over is what it essentially ends up being. It's not a, a hard chamfer, but it's just basically breaking that edge. And you could totally do that with sandpaper um, with a block or something controlled, but I, um, I find that, you know, this hand plane sharpened correctly, um, it's, it, it does the best job of anything. Even, even sandpaper can't touch it. You have to remember which direction you're going, or the right direction. I didn't realize how long it had been. If have any other questions or any comments or anything, go ahead and send them in. I know it takes a minute sometimes for Instagram to push them through before we, re we receive them. But um, we are here Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Instagram Live for free furniture making lessons. <laughs> and then we also record these and add these to YouTube on our channel, Joseph Thompson Woodworks. You can also join Mary May at 1 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, Monday through Friday for free wood carving lessons. And then also join me on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. at Women of Woodworking for some fun woodworking conversation about women in the craft. Sweet. All right. Well, don't have any other questions. Happy birthday! Woo! Yay. Thank you. <laughs> that was my attempt at confetti, guys. <laughs> be awesome. Plenty of it laying around. Thank y'all so much. I'll have a good weekend, and we'll see you back on Monday. Thank you.